In this video, I want to show you how you can manipulate the equilibrium constant and its associated reaction in order to solve problems. So I want to run through a lot of examples here. So if A plus B is in equilibrium with C plus D has an equilibrium constant of Kc, what would happen if we reversed that reaction so that C plus D is now in equilibrium with A plus B? Well, what happens to the equilibrium constant is we take the inverse of it. What happens if we simply multiplied all of these stoichiometric coefficients by two. So now it's 2a plus 2b in equilibrium with 2c plus 2d. Well now the equilibrium constant gets squared. So it was kc, but if we multiply all the coefficients by two, it becomes kc squared. And if we multiply everything by three, it becomes kc cubed. What if we divide everything by two? Well then it's got an equilibrium constant of the square root of kc, or kc to the one half. These are the same thing. So if you start a plus b in equilibrium with c plus d, you divide everything by 2, you have to take the square root of the kc. Similarly, if you divide everything by 3, then you get an equilibrium constant of the cubed root of kc, or kc to the one-third power. So if you start off, a plus b is in equilibrium with c plus d, and that has equilibrium constant kc, you divide all the stoichiometric coefficients by 3, or you divide the reaction by 3, you have to take the cubed root of what your Kc was. Finally, if you want to add two reactions together, let's say you have A in equilibrium with B, and that's got an equilibrium constant K1, and then you've got C in equilibrium with D, and that has equilibrium constant K2, and you add them together so that you have A plus B is in equilibrium with C plus D, the resultant reaction is going to have an equilibrium constant of K1 times K2. In other words, when you add reactions together, you have to multiply their equilibrium constants. So let's see how all this information is useful in solving problems. So this is a common problem you may see. You're gonna be given several reactions and then they're gonna ask what the K is for another reaction. And you have to somehow make these several reactions look like the reaction that they're interested in. So reaction one was H2 plus Br2 goes to 2HBr and you're given the K for that reaction. Reaction two is H2 goes to 2H and we have the K for this reaction. Reaction three was Br2 goes to 2Br and we also have this K. And then they ask, what is the K for this reaction in blue here? So the trick is we have to somehow manipulate these equations to make them add together to look like the one in the blue box here. So I did this in a couple steps. So in step one, I saw that I need an H and a Br in my reactants. Well, the only H and Br I could find in these reactions were here and here. So I knew since these were in the product side, I had to flip both of these reactions. So I flipped reaction two to get H on the reactant side, and then I flipped reaction three to get Br on the reactant side. Then I saw I needed an HBr on my product side. Reaction one already had an HBr on the product side, so I went ahead and just wrote reaction one as it was written. And then in step two, I realized that I had a 2H, 2Br, and 2HBr, but I only need a one in front of each chemical here. So I divided the reactions by two. Divided reaction two by two, so now it's H goes to one half H2. I divided reaction three by two, so now it's Br goes to one half Br. And then finally, I divided reaction one by two, so now it's one half H2 plus one half Br2 goes to HBr. So now I have H, Br, and HBr. And then since one half H2 appears on both sides of the reaction arrow, it cancels out. 1 half Br2 also appears on both sides of the reaction arrow, so it will cancel out. So when I add the reactions together in this manner, after manipulating them like I did, I end up with my reaction in the blue box here. So now I have to go back and remember what changes I made to each reaction so that I can adjust their Ks accordingly. So reaction two, I first flipped it and then I divided it by two. Remember, when you flip a reaction, you have to take the inverse of its K. So reaction two had a K of this, 5.81 times 10 to the negative 43. So you can see I flipped it. Now it's one over 5.81 times 10 to the negative 43. But then I divided it by two. And when I divide a reaction by two, I have to take the square root of its K. So I took the inverse and then the square root of it. 
I did the same exact thing for reaction three. I had to take the inverse because I flipped the reaction and then I also divided it by two. So I took the inverse of 2.9 times 10 to the negative 19 and then the square root of the whole thing because I divided it by two. With reaction one, all I had to do was divide by two. So I only took the square root of this K. Finally, we know when we add three reactions together, we have to multiply all of their K's together. So once you do all of this on your calculator right here, you'll end up with 4.13 times 10 to the 36th power for the KP of this reaction in blue here. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.